Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer. This is the last of my Wiltshire videos for the time being. I'm certainly hoping to come back and it feels like the time has gone like that so, so quickly. I thought I'd just record a video about my response really to the trip and um, just a recap really. So if people have spotted this video for the very first time and don't realize that there's some other videos or they, they may have missed one, just a sort of reflection really of, of where I've been. And also a big thank you to David Chablin who very, very generously allowed me to stay in his empty house in Carn in Wiltshire. And I <clears throat> came here on Saturday, it's Wednesday now as I record this, so I've been here for five days. A, a joy to stay here, lovely place. And thank you for letting me also do a live show, The Vogue Show, I'll put a link in the description if you missed it, with Ga Glastonbury Gabriel. And we did a live show chatting about uh, drone flying and all sorts of other bits and pieces. You're very welcome to tune into that. So I came here on Saturday last, it's August 2020 as I record this. Um, and I came here on my own. The lovely Julia is away, so she wasn't able to come with me, of course. And I took advantage of being able to just go walking, really, uh, in lots of different areas and exploration. And looking at the OS map, there are clearly so many places to go. And I deduced that five days is nowhere near enough. Nowhere near enough. I've been very lucky with the weather. So that was, that was one thing. Today, it's a bit cloudy, it's a bit windy. Um, and I do like where possible to film in nice weather because I always think that these videos are gonna sit on YouTube for, well, I was gonna say forever, but forever is a very long time, but f for the, the foreseeable future. And it's always nice if you go to a little village and they've got thatched cottages or stone uh, houses that we show them off in the best light rather than on a murky, windy day. Not so bad walking in the elements. I think that's quite nice, nice when you're up on the downs, but that's a different thing altogether. So um, I've been very lucky, but you suddenly realize <clears throat> there's lots of places. The other thing that I realize about doing these trips is, and people were telling me and suggesting places to go and you start looking at the map and it's 20 miles this way and 20 miles that way and down here and down there. You just can't do that, I think, on a five day trip. So what I wanted to focus one on, one, on even if I can get the words out in any sort of sentence, um, was I'm staying in this town, Carl, what's near me and let's just explore that area. And another time, either stay here again and explore another separate area and all around there, or stay in that area and explore around there. Seemed to me to make much more sense. It's easier from a production point of view. Um, so th that's been really good. One of the places that uh, I found fascinating and I went over a couple of times was the Wiltshire Downland. Absolutely magnificent downland. However, regular viewers will know that I have, a, I have now a, a bit of a, um, a beef in my joint or whatever it is, a bone in my, whatever the phrase is, um, about this monoculture that you see everywhere. I'd been reading a number of books about this and I wanted to see if Wiltshire was the same as Sussex, particularly on the downland. And I'm sorry to say that a lot of it is. We have farms that since the Second World War have torn out hedgerows, they've expanded the size of the fields, they've got rid of mixed farming, which had been something that's uh, very traditional, and they've replaced it with large prairies of mono crops monoculture. And over the years, of course, they have sprayed those crops with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and they put artificial nitrogen into the soil. And instead of what had been around for ages, um, this beautiful pasture land on the downs, which was very species rich, um, you get these swathes of countryside. And when you look at it, you, you know, there's no buildings on there. It's undulating geology. It's fantastic. It's still very beautiful. But when you suddenly come across a bank 
um, up on the downs that has not been farmed. And you see the plethora of wild flowers and grasses, the butterflies, the insects, the bugs, the snails, all sorts of things. And you observe the birds coming down on that area. You suddenly realize what we've lost in England. And that was that hit me very hard here in Wiltshire because there were these little ioses, ioses, um, you know what I mean, uh, oases, there's the word, um, of this species rich culture. And we seem on the South Downs, where I am in Sussex, to have lost so much of that. And, and it is heart, heart rendering. And I, I had a, an emotional experience as I went past some uh, a bank, and it'll be in one of the videos, because it was just this realization of what we've lost, what, what was everywhere. So going over there, so some of the places I went to was the Lansdowne Monument at what I was calling in the video, wrongly apparently, um, although it's spelt this way, Cher Hill, it's actually Cheryl, I believe is how it's pronounced. Now, of course, when you're a stranger in an area and you're just going by the written word, you don't know, do you? But it's interesting how many people will come in and go, no, Richard, you idiot, it's Cheryl. Or some people were saying it was Cheryl, like the name. So I still don't really know, and unless you actually speak to a local, but I'm just on my own wandering around doing my filming. So I'm just doing the best I can. But the Cheryl or the Lansdowne Monument, fantastic and a white horse, nice to have seen that. If you go to Wiltshire, you can't help but see white horses. There's quite a few of them. Um, and then I took a, a walk in another video down to the, um, from a lovely little church in a little valley in the middle of nowhere, called Callstone Wellington. Fascinating, beautiful church. Unfortunately, couldn't get into the church, which is a shame. And took a walk up to Morgan Hill, where the transmitters, these uh, iconic transmitters, again, another landmark. And you could see across to the Lansdowne um, monument or the obelisk that's there, like a big finger pointing upwards. And, and then further beyond that was, um, a knoll, the name of which has just escaped me at the moment, but a knoll on which planted a bit like at Chantonbury Ring on the South Downs, um, a great big ring of uh, beech trees and uh, beautiful in there, close by a trig point. So that was that, that made two lovely walks. Earlier in the week, I went looking, for, I think it was called Penn Hill for the lakes there, their fishing lakes. They were very nice. Um, although the path at the back of the house near Calne took a, a sort of circuitous route. So it was just sort of getting used to um, how the footpaths go. But there again, typical in the countryside, um, on a route that perhaps isn't used very frequently, the farmer whose land has it had put an electric fence right in front of the stile to clearly mark public footpath. That's a no-no, you can't do that. Um, Luckily, it was a fairly easy thing to walk around the field if you wanted to, but it is your rights of way. And eventually, if they are not adhered to, we lose them. And these rights of way are our heritage, these old pathways that have been there for many, many years. And landowners, are they have a responsibility to keep those up. So we, as walkers, as explorers of the landscape, have to be vigilant. So uh, if you see that, you need to be able to find, I don't know where you go to report it, to the local council, I suppose. So I shall email the council when I get back and say, hey, look, you know, I don't think this is right. And I can send a picture or send them the clip of video. So uh, that will that'll show that. Landowners shouldn't do that. Um, a, a beautiful little village, a beautiful village um, of Hill Martin, which is just north of Khan, where I am. Uh, houses built by William, oh, Poyners, I've got his name wrong. I'll put it on the, I'll put it on the screen. In the 19th century, um, he became Lord of the Manor. And these were basically a cluster of farming cottages. Now, beautiful village, but very expensive. And sadly, this seems to be the way that the world has gone as people are no longer working on the land. Farms can be run 
with these great big machines by one or two people and they've been industrialized on, on a massive um, uh, standard so that instead of being there not only to produce food but also a community, a community of workers and offering a place for families to actually work and, um, and commune, uh, now they're so isolated that the rest of us, the rest of the population who had been forced into towns and uh, cities no longer have that connection with the land or indeed where our food comes from. And I see this time and time again wherever I travel. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I feel duty bound the more I discover this and more I understand this to share this. And people may go, oh, Vobes, you're going on about it. But it's our heritage that's just being uh, eroded away. And the change has been so rapid and that's, I think, I, I mean, nobody minds change. Change is inevitable. But when it's incredibly fast, one person's lifetime, and suddenly all the farms have become almost deserted, the countryside is now only a place where you've got lots of people dressed up in walking clothes, lycra and whatever it is, you know, there's... Um, mecha not mechanical clothes, in, uh, there's a t term for it, but the special... I, anyway, whatever it is, it's all beyond me. Um, and I, it, it's a shame, it, it, it's a shame. But it's a beautiful village, lovely cottages, lovely church warden who I met there. Um, and w also did a not quite so serious uh, exploration of Khan with Glastonbury Gabriel. So I have had a fantastic trip, but really I think I need two weeks to do myself and the videos and the places I visit justice to have more time to get a sense of the place, to do the research, find the nice places to go and, and the not so nice and film them rather than this sort of arrive, get out and run and film as much as I can and come back and edit and get it, get up. I need, I need a longer space of time. I think that's the lesson I've learned from this trip. Anyway, there we go. There's my reflections of this. I hope it's been interesting. Um, if you enjoy what I do and want to support me and help me get out further afield and improve my videos, then do send um, a little bit of money, become a patron uh, and, or give me a donation would be fantastic. Otherwise, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe and I will see you when I'm back out uh, producing my videos. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time, bye-bye, bye-bye.